In this video, I'm going to share an interesting insight with you. And that is how to increase your revenues and your profitability by servicizing your products and productizing your services. Have you heard the expression, the grass is greener on the other side? And indeed, that is the case with products versus services. Traditionally, we've had product companies and we've had services companies. And if you look at many companies traditionally, they either have a product culture or a services culture. But something interesting is afoot. When you take digital technologies into consideration, when you embrace digitization and digital transformation, you can now start to blur the boundaries between products and services. Products can take on aspects of services and services can take on aspects of products. Let me explain the concept of serviceization first. So serviceization is the idea that you can either convert your product into a service through shared access or through things like software as a service. Alternatively, you can attach network-based services to your physical product. Let's look at some examples. I was working a few years ago with Cessna aircraft. Cessna makes private jets, and these private jets are used on less than 10% of the time. Now imagine if Cessna created a pool of shared capacity and sold hours instead of jets. So now you'd be able to sell your Cessna jet as a service. By the way, this would come with pilots, it would come with fuel, it would come with insurance and so on. So that's how they could serviceize their product by creating shared access. You could even serviceize something like tight detergent. You might ask, what do you mean by tight detergent as a service? Well, imagine that Tide partnered with Uber and you already you know that Tide actually operates several hundred Tide cleaners around the country. Now imagine that a Uber driver comes and picks up your laundry in a Tide branded bag, takes it to the laundromat, which Tide operates, and then returns it in the afternoon. This service could be called Uber Clean. It's like Uber Eats, only for laundry. So now instead of selling detergent, Tide would be selling you clean laundry. Serviceization. So these are some examples of how you can convert your product into a service. But you can also attach services to your products. These can be preventive maintenance services, diagnostic services, monitoring services. Take for example, a CPAP machine. So I was working with a company called ResMed. They make CPAP machines and these are for, you know, helping people to breathe. People who have sleep apnea and other problems. Now, not only can you sell this machine, you can now attach sensors to this machine and do patient monitoring. So imagine remote monitoring of patients, you can monitor blood pressure, you can monitor insulin, you can monitor a whole bunch of vitals, uh, and uh, telehealth could be taken to a new level. So John Deere is another example. They are able to offer a whole range of precision farming services with their, in, in their agriculture management services operation by attaching sensors GPS and so on to their agricultural machinery. So the outcome of serviceization is that you can expand the addressable market because you're providing your product as a shared service. You can become more customer centric and you can create subscription based revenues on a consistent basis instead of selling a product infrequently, particularly an expensive capital equipment type product. Let's turn to the other side of the equation, productizing a service. So here what you can do is, if you're offering a service to a customer, let's say it's a professional service, a complex service, let's say you're in the healthcare claims business, let's say you're in tax business, or consulting, or audit, and so on. You can now take aspects of your service and automate it. This is what we call RPA, robotic process automation. So by automating aspects of your service, you can increase margins, you can increase scalability. So for example, in insurance claims processing, you can automate the ingestion of claims. You can automate the analysis of claims to find exceptions, which can be triaged to a human being, while most of them can actually be processed through an algorithm. So here you embed service or product elements into your service. I call these embedded products. You're not actually selling the product, you're still selling the service to the customer, but you have embedded aspects of productization into your service. The result, 
better margins, better scalability, and and your and your because you've started to now build a repeatable uh, offering instead of having a one-time service, you've productized it. We have used this idea very successfully at um, at the Kellogg School. Think about executive education; it's a service, right? But what we have done is you take aspects of the teaching experience and rec you record asynchronous content. That asynchronous content is combined with live virtual teaching to create a hybrid offering. Now in this hybrid offering, 60 to 70% of the content is asynchronous. The rest is done live. The result, massive scalability and improvement in margins. I started offering online courses in 2018, and by now, more than 17,000 students have taken these courses, a scale that was unimaginable in a pure services world where I would be teaching only 60 people. So there's a lot of money on the other side. If you're a product company, think service. If you're a services company, think product. Now, what are the challenges in implementing this? You actually need a dual culture. You need to change your DNA. You need to create incentives and a career track that will encourage this other culture to be built inside your company. Because I believe that companies either have a product DNA or a services DNA. And if you're a services company, you'll have to bring in product management expertise. If you're a product company, you'll have to elevate the services organization and not think of it only as an afterthought, but as a profit center. You will also think about, you need to think about business model innovation, because if you are a tax and audit company now and you automate parts of it, the way you charge for your service cannot just be time and materials. So you have to think about automating, uh, creating new business models that are value-based or contingent pricing. So in summary, folks, productize your service and serviceize your product in order to improve your margins, improve your profitability, and to grow your business.